Kyle Busch will go down as one of the greatest drivers in NASCAR history, and one of its most vocal. Throughout his career, he's never been afraid to share what's on his mind when he doesn't agree with something or someone, and it doesn't matter who it is. Drivers, media, his own team, even NASCAR. No one is safe from Bush's crosshairs. Last year alone, Bush had numerous notable outbursts. In one instance, he got frustrated with Bubba Wallace and went off on him on his radio during the race. He later apologized to Wallace for the remarks. The most memorable Bush burst from 2021 undoubtedly came in September at Darlington during the first race of the 2021 playoffs. That's when, 10 laps into stage two at the Lady in Black, Austin Dillon got into the left rear of Bush in turn two. The number 18 Joe Gibbs car got sideways and the right rear slammed into the fence. The two-time Cup Series champion immediately dropped down to the lower line and headed to pit road. Over the radio, he told his team that he was going straight to the garage. And that's when things got interesting. After making his way down pit road, he made a sharp left turn toward the garage, running right through a barricade of four orange pylons, with one of those cones lodging underneath the front of his car. His aggressive driving surprised numerous race personnel, who hurriedly rushed to the side and out of the car's path. After clearing the people, the number 18 car drove straight to the rear of his hauler, where a clearly agitated Bush exited his car to the cheers of many fans in the stands. Moments later, he delivered a classic Bush interview and referred to his car running like blank multiple times. Bush's frustration levels have unquestionably increased over the last two seasons, and you can draw a direct link to his on-track performance, which has included just three wins in that same time period, or the worst since 2014 when he won a single race. The future Hall of Famer struggles can be attributed to limited track time or more specifically, no practice. He's admitted as much, telling Beyond the Flag in 2020 how a lack of practice time has been frustrating. After almost two years without, you'd think Bush would be happy that NASCAR is reintroducing practice and qualifying in a new format as part of the weekly schedule in 2022. While it varies depending on the track, when racing on ovals that aren't super speedways, the field is divided into two groups, with each group running a 15-minute practice session. When both groups finish, it transitions into single-car, one-lap qualifying. This weekend, before the first race on an oval at Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, Bush and several other drivers met with the media. He was asked what he thought about the new practice format. Not surprisingly, the 36-year-old driver didn't hold back. practice and you qualify and you qualify terrible you can't take it to the garage and strip it apart and fix it you know like you got what you got so um i don't know i think i think we're wasting a set of tires and gas with as short as it is and then not being able to work on it you know um if we had the 15 minutes and we went straight into qualifying great no problem okay i'm good with that but if we all wanted to take it back to the garage and work on it overnight in order to fix our issues you know me being able to talk to the crew chief and stuff and talk about what it's doing, what it's not doing, what I needed to do better and all that. And then we sort of go through our simulation or go through ideas and concepts of what to do, what to try, what to better for the next day. You rebuild your car and you go to the tail of the field and you start to race wherever you start to race after rebuilding it overnight, you know? So, um, but that's, that's, that's not the system we're in. That's not the sandbox we got. So, um, I'm in fantasy land. Bush isn't alone in his fantasy land. Other drivers feel practice is too short, and NASCAR should allow adjustments after qualifying. Interestingly, Bush's push for the modifications to the new format are based on a feeling, not results. In the first two races of the year, the exhibition clash at the Coliseum and the Daytona 500, Bush won the pole in LA and finished the race second behind Joey Logano. In the season opening race at the World Center of Racing, he finished sixth, his best finish there since 2019. 
Despite it being a small sample size, the early returns are encouraging for Rowdy Nation. With the return of both practice and qualifying, albeit a slimmed down version, expect Bush's performance to return to where it was before the pandemic changed the world and the world of sports. One thing NASCAR fans can be sure of that won't change anytime soon is Bush's voice and his willingness to use it. His voice gets people talking. And love him or hate him, there's no denying Kyle Busch is good for NASCAR on and off the racetrack.